Hello everybody and welcome to this installment of YouTube learning videos. Today I'm going to be going through with you a, a quick HSC question on galvanic cells. I'm at, I will be referring to the question that appears in the 2008 Border Studies HSC exam paper and in particular be question 25. Before I start, I just want to make a note that this type of question is actually quite standard. It's very typical to appear in either your half yearlies or your trials or even the HSC exam itself. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will be prepared well enough to know how to approach these style questions. Let's just jump right into it. Now let's have a read of the question. It says, a galvanic cell under standard conditions is represented below. So we have here our cell. On the diagram, clearly label the anode, the cathode, and the direction of electron flow. That's for one mark. To do this, we have to analyze our diagram just quickly and look at what we've got. We can see that on the left-hand side, we've been given a nickel electrode. On the right-hand side, we've been given a platinum electrode. We should note, and you should know by now, platinum is quite an inert electrode. Its purpose here is simply to provide a medium for electrons to transfer through and ultimately to engage with this chlorine gas, which is currently being bubbled through to the solution. So chlorine and nickel are the two substances that we are dealing with. To answer the question of which one is our anode, which is the cathode, and thereby which direction the electron flows in, we need to understand what happens at the anode and what happens at the cathode. By now, you should be able to recall very quickly that anode is where the oxidation occurs and reduction occurs at the cathode. Oxidation meaning the loss of electrons and reduction meaning the gain of electrons. On quick observation between nickel and chlorine gas, we can easily see that nickel being the metal will undergo a loss of electrons, chlorine will gain the electron. So immediately we can label nickel as the anode and we can label the platinum as the cathode. Now although chlorine is the one that will be undergoing reduction, but we still label the platinum electrode as the cathode because the cathode has got to be a metal electrode. Okay, and lastly, which direction will the electron flow in? Well, if the anode is the one that's losing electrons, they are releasing the electrons which then travel to the cathode. Therefore, electron goes from the anode to the cathode and I'll indicate that with an arrow this way. And I can just label on the top electron flow to be clear. So flows from the anode to the cathode. Okay, and that answers our first question. The second question asks us to write a balanced net ionic equation for the overall cell reaction. So in other words, we need to write the redox equation. To write that, we have to understand, as we just did earlier, what happens at each electrode and how the electrons are transferred and how they are lost or gained. To, so the best way to write these is actually setting out our half equations. I'm going to first do the anode, observing what happens here. Nickel will undergo oxidation, which means it will lose electrons. So it starts off as nickel solid and it will lose electrons. So we draw the arrow and nickel will thereby become ionized to nickel 2 plus cation. And we have the two electrons here that it's lost. At the cathode, chlorine will undergo a gain in electrons, which means that the chlorine gas being bubbled through will receive two electrons and they will form chlorine anions and there'll be two of them. Because we can see that what happens is at the moment Cl2 is a covalent molecule 
that's currently held together by the sharing of electrons. So when each of these chlorine atoms receive the electron, they will break apart and form two separate and stable chlorine anions. Okay, so now we've got our, our two half equations. To, do, to write our final net ion equation, we simply add them two together. Now, this side will have nickel solid and our chlorine gas. And on the right hand side, we have our nickel cation and our chlorine cations. They will be in aqueous form, of course. You'll note that I did not actually include these two electrons. They do appear on both sides and they will get cancelled out. You only need to write the net, which means the products that remain at the end and are not spectators. One other thing I wish to note at this point is uh, when I've actually added the equations up, I did not have to adjust any of the coefficients simply because there is a balance. Two electrons are transferred amongst two electrons. If there was an instance where these two number, the two coefficients in front of the electrons were different, you would have to adjust the equations so that they do have the same number of electrons being transferred. Okay, so that doesn't relate in this in this manner. So there we have it, the final net ionic equation for this. Calculate the standard potential is the next question, and that's worth one mark. To do this, we simply look at our two half equations and work out what the half, half cell potential will be, and we add the two up. So looking at an anode, which is the oxidation of nickel, we have to flip to our potential table, which you will receive in the HSC, and you look for the relevant equation. Now here that one, is, here it is, here we've got nickel 2 plus, plus two electrons goes to nickel solid. Of course in this situation what we're dealing with is the reverse. So where the forward one is denoted by minus 0 0.24, the reverse one is therefore 0 0.24. So immediately at the anode, we have 0 0.24 volt, volts being produced. At the cathode, we have the reduction of chlorine gas. So let's have a look for that one in our table. You'll see that the one at the bottom right here corresponds. This one says uh, chlorine gas plus electrons goes to chlorine ions. And that equation alone will produce 1.4 volts. So heading back to our answer sheet, we've got cathode being produced at 1.4 volts. Now the final step that we need to do is simply adding the two potentials up. Now they're both positive so that works very well. Total cell potential will therefore equal to 1.64 volts. And that's your one mark answer. Okay, now the last question is a theoretic, is, is one based on a written response. So explain any color changes observed in this cell as the reaction proceeds. Going back up to look at our situation we've got here, the colour change that will occur will be between or among the two aqueous solutions. You'll observe that in the first one, nickel nitrate solution produces a pale green colour, potassium chloride produces a colourless, a, produces a colourless solution. So the question is, as the reaction proceeds, how will these two colours change, if any at all? Well, understanding what happens, we know that our nickel will produce will oxidize, which means we will be producing more and more of your nickel ions that go into your solution. On the other hand, we are going to have chlorine gas reducing into chlorine ions into solution. So what we ineffectively have is a production of more nickel ions and more chlorine ions on both sides. Now when this, when more chlorine occurs here, to balance out the increase in negative charge, the salt bridge will happily transfer some of the potassium over and that will produce more potassium chloride. 
Of course, being colourless, you won't observe any colour change. On the other hand, our nickel nitrate, we are producing more nickel ions, and to balance the charges, our salt bridge will transfer more nitrate ions. So we are making more nitrate, uh, nickel nitrate, sorry. We're making more of this solution, so naturally the pale colour the pale green color will increase in intensity. So overall what we will observe is the anode half, anode half cell will become more green and the cathode half cell will have no color change because it is already colorless. So putting those two together, that's what we need to write in our solution. And I won't write the actual solution for you, but to structure it, making sure we pay attention to the HC verb here, which says explain, you need to firstly identify the colour changes. And I've just done that above for you. Secondly is to, ex this is the explain part. Tell us why. Why has the anode half cell increased in pale, uh, become more green intense and why has the cathode half cell remained the same color and again I have answered that um, much earlier so I'll, I will allow you all now to uh, if you'd like structure your answer feel free to send them through to us or even put it as part of the YouTube comments and I can actually comment and feedback for you in return on how well you answered and structured that response uh, well, that's it, guys. Um, if there's any other questions that you have in regards to any step along this way, please uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comments area. We will look in. We will look at your queries and um, get make sure that uh, you you have your problems answered. Okay. Until next time. Good luck studying.